Okay, welcome to whatever part this is. I think it's 16 now of creating this expense tracker. It's a WPF app. We're not using anything fancy, no fancy methodologies like MVVM or anything like that. We're just, the only thing we are using is myapps.metro for our styling. And in the last video, we went ahead and we created an expense uh, table in our SQLite database using EF Core. It's pretty simple to go ahead and create a new table once you have the model created, which we did. And we did a little bit of the scaffolding um, for what we're going to do today. And we're just going to continue on and get those added to the database after we fill out the little two part or two question form. If you want to go to the very beginning, I think I have all of these in a playlist. I don't think I missed any that you can go through and follow along. And also, if you get lost, I will have the code in my GitHub repo that will be linked in the description. And feel free to subscribe. You never know what I'm going to talk about next. Uh, it could be WPF one day, and it could be how to do something in Python or maybe um, Angular or whatever I'm feeling about learning and sharing with you guys, whether it's me learning on my own or at work. And um, yeah, that's enough intro. Uh, in the last video, we went ahead and we added the expense uh, class that I talked about. And we also added a table to our database called expenses. And today I wanted to go ahead and have the ability to save those expenses in the database. I did a little bit of um, work ahead of time just because it was more tedious and I don't think you guys wanna see um, all of this all over again. Stuff like, let me show you what I've added. So if we start the app and I click on a particular budget. So let's say I wanna add an expense to this budget right here with the budget amount of $800. Uh, we'll hit add an expense because right here is where we'll eventually have all of our expenses listed out. And we'll hit this. This form will come up on the right and we can fill this in, give it a title. So gas and then some kind of amount. Let's say I paid $60 in gas and then I'd hit create expense. So all of this is done. So if I click this, this will appear. And we have the click event for that. Notice there's nothing here yet, but that's what I saved for us to do together. What I wanna do is once someone hits that create expense button, we wanna validate it first, right? We don't wanna automatically send it to the database if it's not valid or if they didn't put anything, whatever the case may be. So I added to our budget validation class, this is where we validated uh, the budget earlier. I went ahead and I did something similar, validate expense, and I brought in the title of the expense and the amount. Basically, I just make sure they put a title in that form when they hit uh, the create expense button. And then I also make sure we have an amount and that the amount is valid. So it's a double, um, but when it's in the form, it's a string. So we wanna make sure that's gonna be able to parse out and turn into a double for the amount, like the dollar amount. And then if not, we add error messages depending on what's missing or what they did wrong. I think that's all in this class. And then what I also did is I added an add expense to database method in our budget data class um, to add an expense object to our SQLite database. So I kind of did that ahead of time. You've already seen me do these things when we created the budget and we added the budget. Um, so I didn't think it was worth doing all over again with you. But now that we have these two things out of the way, I didn't really test any of this, so hopefully hopefully it works. But let's go ahead and create a string, call it errors, and that's going to be equal to the budget, budget validation dot validate expense. And then we'll pass in the title and the amount. I already forget what the text boxes are called, so expense title text box and expense amount text box. So I think the first one's title, so expense uh, title text box dot text is our first uh, parameter that we're passing. And then into the method, we're also going to pass expense amount text box dot text. And then if our um, string comes back as empty, meaning there are no errors. So if errors is equal to an empty string, then we'll continue on and add that to the database. Else uh, we want to show that error to the user. So we'll use the show error method that we have up here. Show 
error method. Let's call that and pass in that errors string up here, All right? So if it is valid, it comes back as an empty string. Now we can just add it to the uh, database. So budget data dot add expense to database. And here we have to make the expense object. I got ahead of myself. So um, let's create a new expense object and call it expense. That's gonna be equal to a new expense. And we're going to give it some values. So the first value, we uh, want to give it is the budget ID, right? So what budget is this expense associated to? And how do we know what budget ID to give it? Um, so what's cool that we did before is whenever a budget is selected, we set the property selected item equal to that budget, which is way up here, right? So in order for them to add something, that has to be selected. So we can do selected item dot ID, and that will give us the budget ID. And we don't want a semicolon, we want a comma. And what else do we have? So title, and that's gonna be equal to this expense title text box dot text. And then lastly, amount is we're going to parse this out and turn it into a double because amount, if we remember in that class is uh, a double. So double dot parse, we already made sure it could parse correctly in the validation. And what are we parsing? We're parsing the text box dot text. And there we go. Notice we're not giving it an ID because we set um, ID to auto increment. Let's make sure. Yeah, auto increment for ID. When we added this table, EF Core did that for us, which is nice. So now we can pass this expense to add expense to DB. We'll hit save. Uh, that's everything. Before we send it to the database, actually, yeah, let's put a breakpoint right here and make sure all of this is filled in. So let's start this. Let's check what the ID of this 800 budget is because I wanna make sure we're giving it the right ID. So 800 has an ID of three, okay. So if we click on that, we add an expense and let's go forward with the gas. I paid $60 in gas. I hit create expense. Let's hover over this and make sure. Yeah, uh, the budget ID is three, which we saw, that's correct and these two are good. And notice it went through validation, okay. So if we hit continue, um, we didn't tell it to do anything like clear this and hide this or anything. Uh, but we should, if we refresh this, see that row. And here we go, um, perfect. Budget ID three, gas, and 60. So I think in the next video, I wanna go ahead and set up a list view, kind of like how we do it with the budgets. Maybe above each one, just like somehow describe what this data is, because no one really knows this is, well, I guess budget amount, but we should make it more clear that this part are the budgets, and then down here are the expenses, and then we don't really need a title or anything here. I'll try to think about how to make that look good. Um, but we'll add a list view down here. We'll add um, to the flyout saying successful once we create the expense. I have some code I kind of need to refactor. Like we can combine these two methods really. I was just lazy and uh, have them do the same thing. But yeah, we can have a flyout that comes out and says, you know, expense created. And I think those are the two things I want to cover in the next video and maybe work on the logic. That might be a lot for one video, but maybe in the future too. Um, work on the logic that once we add expenses, this goes down like remaining monthly budget, right? So, well, yeah, I think that's it um, for this video. Pretty simple, right? We got EF Core, it makes everything nice. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully um, you were able to follow along and if not, code down below. Go check it out. Hope to see you in the next one.